All right, so everybody, this is the AP problem from 2003, number four, form B. And it says a particle moves along the x-axis with a velocity of time t greater than or equal to zero given by b of t equals negative one plus e to the one minus t. Find the acceleration at time t. So listen, the first thing you got to recognize with A, it says find the acceleration. You have to be, at this point in our game, you have to recognize the derivative of the position is velocity. And the derivative of velocity is acceleration. Letter A was a gimme. You find the derivative of A of t by taking the derivative of negative 1 plus that e stuff. Derivative of negative 1 is 0. Derivative of e to the crap is e to the crap. And this is the hard part. This is why they have the negative t. Times the chain rule. Derivative of 1 minus t is 0. Derivative of negative t is negative 1. So the, the acceleration formula, when you put 3 in, is this. So the answer to this equation, A of 3, and they would leave it in terms of E, is negative 1 over E squared. It has a negative acceleration. Okay? You get two points for this. Holy cow! You get a point for the answer and a point for this derivative right here. Which is surprising to me. I thought this would be just a point for the answer. No units, because they didn't give units, right? That's the acceleration. We know it's accelerating negatively at time three. So you got two points done. That means there are nine, seven points left. There's always nine points. Always, always, always. All right, so we group all that up and we put it up here. Boom. In a, is the speed of the particle increasing at time three? Give a reason. All right, we got to talk about this because... I want to be clear about this. If you are driving a car forward and you push the brake, you deaccelerate. So the acceleration is negative, but your speed is still positive. But you go 30 miles an hour to 20 miles per hour. So your speed is decreasing. But if you take the stupid car and you go in reverse and you have negative acceleration. You drop it reverse and you have negative acceleration. That means you have the gas pedal on. This is not, remember, speed is a number. Velocity is a direction. So we know right now from letter A, we know from letter A that the acceleration at time three is less than zero. If the velocity is less than zero, the speed is increasing. So we plug in V of three. And the only thing I'm honestly interested in at this point is, is this more or less than 1? Well, it's 1 over 9. Negative 1 plus 1 9. See what I mean? This is negative. So right now I can say V of 3 is also less than 0. Ooh, this is a big deal. So, time for some English. That great statement. I would say speed is increasing. And you would spell it out, but I'm too lazy. Because A of 3 is less than 0 and V of 3 is less than 0. And this is hard for students. I'm not saying the speed is not a direction. You're going faster in the, to the left. Because the speed is to the left and the acceleration is to the left. It is going faster that way. It is one point for the red. So we are three points in. And that's the difference between velocity and speed. And it's been a long time since we did that. That's chapter 4, like 4.3. Letter C, find all the values of T at which the particle changes direction. Justify your solution. All right, guys, this is not, this is not like a space machine that pops out there. It is a car, it is a particle. If you go from negative velocity to positive velocity, what do you have to pass through? Zero. So this is an intermediate value theorem type of thought process. So really what I want to do is I want to find all the times that V of T equals zero. I got to start there. And I would want to write that, okay? Because 
actually, this is worth a point, what I just wrote. So you got, it, it shows that you understood that, hey, I got to find some zeros. Now, before you grab your calculator, because this was not a calculator test, <laughs> you move the 1. Oh, lo and behold, e to the crap has to be 1. What does the crap have to be? Crap has to be 0. So t is 1. There is only one answer for this. T is 1. So, we know right now, based, based on our previous problem, that the velocity at, so now we know that V of 1 is 0. We also knew from the previous part that V of 3 was less than 0. And I could find that V of, I could put half in. Okay? Uh, and I could do that and do some math up here, but I could prove that that's greater than zero. Everyone, if you're not seeing that, take a second and put in half. It's negative one plus e to the one minus half. It's e to the half. The square root of three is more than negative one. Okay, it's, gonna, it's more than value one. It's going to be positive. So by doing all this work, what do you do? You show now that there, there you can say particle, particle, Changes direction at t equals 1. Going from, and i got to give myself a little more right, space right. Going from positive velocity. I'll spell it out. To negative velocity. Changes direction. And that's worth 4. Two points. You have to get the justification in that. Take all of that. So everyone, I don't know if you've been keeping track. That means we're five points deep out of nine. That means D is worth a ton of points. Okay? All right. Moving back up. Letter D. Find the total distance traveled by the particle from zero to three. All right. One thing we haven't talked about in my class, we talked about the distance the difference between position and distance. I know we've done that. This is a distance problem. So we know this, that the velocity change at 1 is an issue. But we can write, this is a notation thing for the AP. This, when you put absolute value signs around it, that is the distance. If you did this integral, you don't get distance. You get displacement. We don't want displacement. Think about it. This would be positive above the axis, negative below, right? What's this saying? That's saying, hey, no matter what this area is, we're going to take the positive. All right. Because we know from problem C that there is a velocity change, we're going to have to do this integral in two distinct portions because this is a non-calculator portion. We're going to have to do it the one before and the one after. The good news is the antiderivative for both of these will be the same once you calculate. Do you know what I mean? And I would argue, and it depends on your teacher, I would actually do the antiderivative, you know, somewhere else. How's that for a horrible answer? You know what I mean? Away from the problem. And I can see it's negative t. And this is the hard part, and I don't want to spend a lot of time with it. Plus C, I'd write it because it's not right otherwise. We know the antiderivative, the take the root of, of E to the 1 minus T, you get a negative sign. See what I mean? The hard part for students is that this sign change right there. You should be able to see it by taking the derivative of it. Okay? So, knowing that will cut out a lot of work for us down here. Because then on this problem, we should be able to write out here, this, negative t. Now, we don't need the plus c because it is an integral between points. All right? I don't want to get bogged down in this math. I really don't. But if you plug in the numbers, I'll write them out for you. You're going to get negative 1 minus 1 plus e for this, plus, and I'm cheating because I'm looking at my notes. 3 plus e to the negative 2 minus 1 minus 1. 
So there is a lot of math to happen here. I mean, I would level with you. If I was doing the AP, I would stop right here and finish everything else first. Because in my heart, I know that whatever's left is only worth a point. And there's a lot of grind in here and a lot of chances for mistakes. All right? I can take eight and nine, I think. And if you work all this out, if you work all this out, you get E plus E to the negative two plus one. And that is the, or minus one, sorry, minus one. And that is the answer. And students hate that answer. But that's the answer. Points. Antiderivative is a point. Zero, one, one to three, point. And then evaluate the distances here. You made this attempt, not even getting the right answer. Point, and then the total distance point. So like I said, that last step was only worth one point. Okay? Um, if you're getting good at this, and you're not yet, but you got, you know, a few weeks, I would argue that this is worth nine. I would hope you get seven. You gotta see your that you say to yourself, I can get seven on this when I get done practicing. This is an easier problem. This is an easier problem, especially the first group. Okay? Alright, keep practicing. Eleven minutes. A minute long.